Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our all day movie workshop. I'm Peter, for those joining you. And I'm going to be the host today. And uh, yeah, we've got a really vibrant movie coming up. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I'll just let you know how the day flows. So we're going to start with David in the movie commentary. And uh, then afterwards, we have a 10 minute break. And that's the time for you to submit your questions and your prayers uh, via our form. And uh, then we'll have David in the closing session and he'll respond to all your questions and prayers. So I'm going to pass it straight over to David now. Thank you, Pete. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I hope you're ready for a deep, deep, deep dive today because we are dropping way down the rabbit hole today, way, way down into the light. And uh, this is going to be an experience. I've, I've been up for quite a while and, and uh, wow, in my meditations, Jesus is just downloading, 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 uh, uh, saying, here's, this is it, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I said, this is it. He's like, yeah, what, what are you saying? He said, get off the fence, get off the fence. Uh, come on, get off the fence. You know, you really have to dive in with all your heart. And I said, oh, get off the fence. Okay, well, if I get off the fence, then where do I go? He says, go over to the swimming pool. And he says, and don't even think about the wading pool, the kiddie pool. Uh, walk all the way around. Don't just stick your feet in and with your ankles and toes and splash around in this pool. I am the pool. Get in the pool. Get in the pool. Go in the deep end. Go off the diving board. Stop intellectualizing. Stop trying to banter concepts around and, and go into the prayer of your heart. Don't mess around. Don't fool with this. This is your opportunity to use this lifetime to transcend the dream, to wake up from the dream. This isn't about, you know, just sticking with the concepts and, and you know, using mantras and everything. This is about an, an actual, actual direct experience. This is our, we are the tribe of Christ right here. And we are, he's taking us, oh my gosh, we're going down the water slide today. Uh, he's he's taking us down the water slide into the deep end. It's it's about starting to realize that the dream doesn't hold anything that you really want. Don't be thinking about future dreams because he wants us to see the dream from the Holy Spirit's perspective right now. And he's telling us it's the only way we'll be satisfied is if we forgive the world and and see that we're dreaming and and from that dreaming position in our mind we can be wakened we can allow the holy spirit god will take us from there but god cannot take us as a human being god can't take us as a body into spirit because spirit didn't create the body spirit didn't create this world spirit didn't create anything of time and space spirit has nothing really to do with it only the holy spirit can use the symbols that the ego made which is time and space bodies and all the everything else and take us to the light so sometimes people say to me well yeah that's the prayer of my heart but but i don't feel like god hears my prayers well let's look Look throughout history. Jesus came to demonstrate that there is no death, that there's only eternal life, and, and that you live forever and ever and ever. That's pretty strong. Even though that was 2,000 years ago on planet Earth, that's a pretty strong witness. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He said, come on, come, follow me. I'm calling you out of the world. I'm calling you out of the world. Let your heart get activated. It's okay to get fired up about oneness and love and God. It's okay, it's okay. 
That's your birthright, that's your inheritance. You were created by God. You will forever be a perfect creation of God. So it's okay, let's, let's remember that. And then as we watch history, we had all kinds of mystics and saints that followed Jesus. The prophets came before Jesus. Many mystics and saints came after Jesus. And, you know, there were things that were pretty tough, plagues and wars. I think of World War I, First World War, and, you know, there's explosions and bombs going off and bodies seeming to die left and right in Europe. And what does Jesus do? He sends Mother Mary to Portugal. That's right, Antonio. That's right. He sent, he sent Mother Mary to, to three little children that could see her. And, he, and Mother Mary said, pray. This is, a war, this is a wartime. All Jesus wants you to do is pray. Pray, please pray now with me. And then that was World War I. And right before World War I in the 1800s, Jesus sent Mary Baker Eddy. That's right. For centuries, people were futzing around with the theologies of what did Jesus mean? Well, Mary Baker Eddy started sharing back in the 1800s and early 1900s what Jesus actually meant. And all the other denominations are trying to grab, do the best that they can to practice the teachings of Jesus. But Mary Baker Eddy preceded World War I. She said there's no mind and matter, no life, truth, substance, intelligence and matter. She really pointed the way. She said it's about a transformation in your, in your mind and lining up with the spirit, the light in your mind. So, Okay, Mary Baker Eddy, we had Jesus, we had all the prophets and saints. Then we get to World War II and Adolf Hitler. So we see Hitler and the German, the Panzer Army trying to take over Europe, taking over, trying to take over the world. Who did Jesus send during World War II? He sent Mahatma Gandhi. He sent Gandhi at the same time that Hitler was trying to take over the world, there's a simple, tiny little man in India that was saying, nonviolence is the way. Nonviolence is the way. And he, Gandhi prayed and he fasted and he devoted his whole life to nonviolence. And he lived at the same time that Adolf Hitler lived. So anybody who saw Hitler and was horrified with concentration camps and destruction, destruction, human destruction, should have looked, turn your eyes to India, to Mahatma Gandhi, Mohandas K. Gandhi. And then as we move forward, you know, we've had lots of saints. We've had the, the Joel Goldstein, we've had, we've had so many mystics and saints that basically are saying, turn within. So today, we are going to really pull the plug on the ego. And what I mean by that is we're going to start to realize that you can't dabble with the Course in Miracles even because Jesus says this Course will be believed entirely or not at all. It doesn't do any good to banter the concepts if you don't have a direct contact with Jesus. It does, the concepts won't get you anywhere. The concepts will just have you spit, treading water, you know, spinning your wheels in the mud. And that's not your, God's will for you. Uh, for many Christians, you know, it's, it's time to get off the fence. It's time to quit debating theology and live the teachings of Jesus Christ. It's time to, to stop the arguments, stop the debates, and, and really pray and go into these deep teachings because Jesus is showing us that God's will for us is eternal life. It's not to be a Christian or a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim. That's, those are more concepts, more theologies. That's the trampoline. We're supposed to spring off the trampoline. We're going for a direct experience. Who's in with me? Who's ready to wake up in this lifetime? Who says enough of time and space? Who says enough of trudging along? This is time to wake up. So, 
you voted for the polls, the themes this week, and this is what you voted for. This is what is gonna draw our movie for today. The first one that you voted for with receiving the most vote was taking back projections, having full responsibility for my mind. Taking back projections to the mind. Don't take them back to your personality self. Don't say, I so-and-so have to figure out a way now to take the projections of the whole world of time and space back to my personality self, my private mind. Ridiculous. No, this is taking all the projections ever of time and space. Any event in history, you're going to take back all of history today. All of history. You're going to take back every aspect of history and linear time when you bring it back to your mind. I was actually looking at one of the uh, lessons today, uh, workbook lesson 158, and the lesson 158 is from Jesus, today I learned to give as I receive, and this is how he starts the lesson. What has been given you? The knowledge that you are a mind, in mind, and purely mind, sinless forever, wholly unafraid, because you were created out of love. Nor have you left your source remaining as you were created. Okay, so maybe you're accustomed to thinking of yourself as a human being. Maybe you believe you have a story. Maybe you believe you have a personal history. No, Jesus is teaching us you were a mind, you were created in the mind of God, you're Christ, an idea in the mind of God, and you remain as God created you. You have never been a body or in a body, and that's why we need a deep movie, because this fog of forget, forgetfulness, this, this mesmerism, this hypnotism, this dream of separation, isn't true. None of it is true. Not a single string or fabric of this uh, dream of separation has ever existed for one instant. And we have to have an experience. So Jesus is picking out a masterful movie today to, uh, to take us into the experience. I hope you're ready because uh, I, like they say in the matrix, hold on to your hat because Kansas is going by by. Time and space are going by by today. Second theme, the purpose of my relationships is the healing of my mind. The purpose of all relationships, that's right, the purpose of ones that were called enemies and friends and lovers and acquaintances and everyone you think of in time and space. If you can think of Adolf Hitler, then you have a relationship with Adolf Hitler. And basically, Jesus is saying, the purpose of my relationships is the healing of my mind. How's that for a reinterpretation of Adolf Hitler? The purpose of Hitler is the healing of my mind. The purpose of Putin is the healing of my mind. The, the purpose of Osama bin Laden is the healing of my mind. The purpose of Saddam Hussein is the healing of my mind. The purpose of Mussolini is the healing of my mind. And the purpose of all my lovers, family, friends, and anybody I've ever heard of. The purpose of Einstein is the healing of my mind. Okay, I choose the experience that I want to have. It's a choice. Isn't that great to know? It, it's a choice. It's not a skill. It's not a bunch of money, it's not the right conditions and form, it's not the, the, the perfect partner, it's not the perfect house, the perfect location, the perfect climate, it's a choice in the mind, that's it. And aren't we grateful that that choice is available for us? <laughs> because that's the most glorious thing I think there is, is that we can choose to forgive. We can choose to release this world. And, and that's the greatest, greatest gift we could ever have. If we believe in separation, then the choice to forgive it has got to be the greatest gift. Better than diamonds, better than gold, better, better than millions of dollars. The choice to forgive in our mind is our option to opt out of linear time and to opt in, 
not to a mailing list, but to opt into eternal life. That's not small. That's not a small thing. Letting go of weakness and stepping into strength. Yes. Taking full ownership of what the Spirit gives me. So, before I get into the movie, I just want to say that, that you have to start to see how practical salvation really is. You know, with, even within the Course in Miracles community, there's all these bantering on topics that are really much ado about nothing. I mean, one of the questions that a lot of Course in Miracles students ask is, which version of A Course in Miracles should I study and practice? Well, let's take a teaching from the, the Course itself. Seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. Let's apply A Course in Miracles to that. It's a book. It's just a book. It's a book in time and space. And I happen to have an original one. This is, this is a hardbound, <laughs> yep, text, preface, text, workbook, mainly for teachers. Oh, it's a hardbound, clarification of terms, supplements. Seek not to change the course. Seek rather to change your mind about the course. If you're concerned about what, which version of A Course in Miracles you should be studying, maybe you should open up to workbook lesson number seven, which is, I see only the past. Because all versions of A Course in Miracles are words, and they're all the past. And this movie will help us with that, because we don't need different versions of anything. We need to accept the atonement. We need to forgive this world. We need to give the forgive all of time and space if we're going to wake up to God. The question should not be, which version of A Course in Miracles should I study? Don't waste your time on questions like this, because if you apply lesson number seven, I see only the past, basically, when you ask that question, what version of A Course in Miracles should I study? You're saying, which, which version of the past is best for me? And Jesus' correct answer is, eh, none. There are no versions of the past that are helpful. All you're to do is see the course and see the world. For, forget this world, forget this course, and come with open, empty hands unto your God. Don't stick with arguing and debating theology. Don't debate about different versions of anything. It's like saying, which, which chewing gum should I chew? Jesus is like, come on, stop the chewing. Get off the fence. Get off the fence and get into the deep end. Really, let's really forgive the world. And this movie today is so, so good. So out of all the movies, this actually in our Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, this, was, this is one of our top 10 movies of all time. This movie is a very unconventional love story because it's a movie that's going to take you into a love story to end all love stories. You know, <laughs> we want the eternal love of God. We don't want, in the end, we don't want stories of love. We want actual connection to God. This movie is going to take place in India. Yay for India! That's right, Kenneth, in our community meeting, he, he went on, you know, we should be praising God and singing and dancing all day. Every day should be a festival. We should just chant and sing to our heart's content. And then when, there he is, in the yellow back there, and I thought, Jesus was like saying, oh, it's time to use an India movie. This time, if we're going off in the deep end, we have to go to the traditions of the great mystics and saints, legendary mystics and saints, legendary teachings. You know, we're not talking about like United States and Europe and all these little rinky dinky countries. India, ooh, now you're asking for it. You withdraw all the projections of time and space. Now we're going. We're going beyond Advaita Vedanta. We're going today, Jesus is taking us down, right down into the light. Because 
in the end, we have to realize that it's only the depth that will free our mind. We're not going to reach heaven by bantering around concepts and debating concepts. The time for debating concepts has, has ended. We're going swimming, and the tribe of Christ is, is leaving land, and we're going into the pool, and we're not coming out. <laughs> we're not coming out of the pool. <laughs> we're, we're not going to dry off. The monastery will dry off, but, but the tribe of Christ is going dipping into the deep pool of Christ, the pool of wisdom, and we're not coming out. We're not buying a ticket back to the world again. We don't care about the shore. It's time to bring this ship into the shore but, and throw away the oars. We're going swimming and we're not coming back. <laughs> we're going swimming in the pool of Christ and we're not coming back. So the movie today is Jesus has taken on a, a deep ride today. We're, we're going to watch Slumdog Millionaire, one of the MWGE top 10 movies of all time. And this movie came out in 2008. Does anybody remember 2008? What was going on in the world in 2008? That was the great, the great recession. All the, all the, the markets crashed, the property values crashed. I remember 2008, I, I was going to Australia and, and my friend, who, Les, who was a captain down there of Qantas Airlines, he, he got, he got uh, laid off. He took a voluntary layoff because nobody was flying. 2008 was when the world was, was kind of crashing economically. And Jesus and the angels are laughing because to them, Prosperity in form and crash <laughs> economic disaster are actually the same. Remember, all of the images are not true. So economic prosperity is as big of an illusion as economic depression. Knowing God has nothing to do with accumulating money and possessions. Knowing God has nothing to do with economic growth. In fact, here during this great 2008 recession and global recession, here comes this gem. Jesus just lays an egg. He delivers <laughs> slumdog millionaires. Say, here, let's get back on track. <laughs> it's about knowing God. It's about remembering God. It's not about survival of the body. It's about remembering the light and realizing that never once were you a body. You never once were a body. You believed you were. You dreamed a dream of exile from God, but that, that dream wasn't real. So this is where we get to the heart of forgiveness. So in this movie, we have, um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a, I'll say it's an intense ride. Today, keep your hands and your fingers inside the carpet. This is one, do not try to leave the carpet today because th this one's going to have, uh poverty it's going to have um you know what seems to be harming harming children in in it it's going to have a, a gangster in it it's going to have a, a slum lord uh it's like a slum lord is like a version of a pimp you know like prostitutes have a pimp slum lord is going to have a slum lord in it his name is mammon and when i saw that i said oh yeah this uh this slumlord, his name Mammon, it reminded me of what Jesus said in the Bible, you cannot serve both God and, and Mammon. <laughs> so the slumlord's name is, is Mammon. <laughs> then there's a, a, a gangster uh, in the movie as well. But mainly we're going, to, we're going to watch two little boys in India who, who have grown up in the slums. Um, and the movie will take place mainly in um, two locations in India, Bombay and Mumbai. And I found this on the web. Oh, my phone is talking to me now. Uh, the, the main character, I would say, probably is Jamal. 
And Jamal has a brother named Salim. And there will come a point, some of you know of the riots in India. There have been riots all over the world, but India has been a place where there oftentimes are riots usually between the Hindus and the Muslims. But these two little boys are going to become orphaned. They're basically going to lose their mother in a riot, uh, where she's going to be struck and, and knocked out in a, in a pool of water, and they're going to become orphaned. Then there's uh, Lakita, I think is her name. She's going to be a, a little girl who's also orphaned when her parents are killed. And so these three little orphan children, basically, uh, three of them, Latika and Jamal and Salim, these are going to be our main characters in the movie today. Three orphan children, orphan children from the slums of India. Now, as they go through their, we're going to see flashbacks uh, showing their life. And basically, we're going to see flashbacks to their childhood, which is quite extreme. Um, I think most, most watching today in the tribe of Christ have not had quite the extreme life as the world would judge it of, um, of being orphaned, losing your parents, um, having to survive from, a, from being children in a, what seems to be an egoic world, a cutthroat world of kill or be killed, of, of lie, steal, cheat. Um, this is an Indian culture of the slums where basically the slum lords would basically even take children and lure them with Coca-Colas and, and lure them away from the extreme poverty that they had only to put the children back on the street to beg to, so that the slum lords could get money. Talk about ch child trafficking, using children to make money. As, imagine that being your, your career, using children from the slums to make money. And then, of course, they would even do things like they would blind the children. Some of the children were blinded so that they would get more money. Imagine taking out a child's eyes and a child's eyesight just to make money. That's how extreme uh, this movie will show us is there's a lot of very, very, very extreme scenes in this movie. So keep your hands on the carpet today. Don't. <laughs> Don't let the ego take you off on a, on a ride, because the overall movie is what Jesus is showing us is it's going to be using these, the lives of these three children to go towards the deepest teaching of A Course in Miracles and all the world's spiritualities and religions. Um, if you read it in A Course in Miracles, you read it in Workbook Lesson 132. There is no world. That is what this, that's the central idea that this course attempts to teach. You can see that you will not reach the state of there is no world if you keep bantering concepts. Uh, you know, that the concepts are just going to reinforce the belief that there is a world. And, and you must go beyond belief to, to truth. You must go beyond concepts and theologies and philosophies to an actual direct experience of God. That's the whole point of everything. There is no other point. You're not asked to be a mystic or a saint even, because those are just symbols too. Wouldn't you rather have a direct experience of God than, than hold on to those kind of concepts? This movie will help you actually forgive the mystics and saints. It will help you forgive all of linear time because it's actually going to take us in a love story all the way to the experience that you can give your mind permission to let go of believing in this world entirely. That's how deep it goes. This movie is about pulling the plug on the ego entirely. 
This is not about trying to make a better world. This is not about trying to improve the world. I know it's pretty extreme, but actually Jesus is going to teach us through this movie today that there is no better or worse world. There is no better conditions or worse conditions. He's going to use what seem to be extreme conditions, just like he did with the crucifixion. Uh, everyone who, who reads about Jesus and the crucifixion and the resurrection knows that is an extreme teaching example uh, to have a man crucified and bleed on a cross and then come resurrected when the stone is rolled away. That is an extraordinary extreme example. But today is going to be a very strong extreme teaching example. You know, this movie is not Bambi. This movie, you know, I'd say thank you, Walt, for all your Disney movies and everything, and good metaphysics and everything. But this movie is, is going to, to teach what the Matrix wished it could teach. <laughs> this movie is going to teach what, what the Truman Show tried to teach. This movie is going to go for an experience where you realize that you can't mess it up, that everything you think you did wrong and everything you think you did right was not it. It's going to teach you that there's a, a tre tremendous transcendent experience available this very instant that will free your mind from everything that it ever believed and considered before. That's how deep we're going today. That's what this is about. This is about releasing the world. This is not about trying to make a better world. This is about realizing that the world was made by the ego and you have to let go of the ego and its world you to go to spirit. This is very, this is real basic and simple. I think today's lesson is the, the base, the most basic teaching lesson that there is. And I remember I just reviewed the movie last night and I just was like, by the end of this movie, I was so transported that all I know is what was left of David <laughs> and the body was a bunch of streaming tears rolling and rolling and rolling down the cheeks because that's where this movie is going today. I was just left crying, crying in gratitude that, that it's that simple. It's that simple. It's not complicated at all. The truth is simple. The truth is, is very, very simple. So in this movie, we're going to say, as I said, we're going to see children that seem to grow up in, in India. Starting off in the slums, they will actually, after their mother uh, is killed during a riot, they will do the best they can to survive. And they will actually at some point find themselves at the Taj Mahal. Imagine <laughs> starting off in the slums and, and they find themselves at the Taj Mahal. And then it goes on deeper and deeper with slumlord, with gangster, with uh, seeking a relationship. I think this movie is, I would say this movie is kind of like a soulmate love story that blows past that concept and goes all the way to God. You know, we know soulmates are part of a destiny and we know this very helpful teaching device, but this movie is going to blow past even the soulmate concept and it's going to end up in a dance. It's going to end up in the divine dance, which is so far beyond so even soulmates. So if some of you have been yearning for your soulmate, Jesus is like, good, I'll let you see a glimpse of that in this movie, and then we're going, we're going back to heaven. We're, we're going to a place which is pure spirit, and there are no soulmates in heaven, <laughs> because there aren't separate souls. It's just pure oneness, pure love, pure abstract light. We're going to go right into the concept of a, like a very mystical soulmate connection, and then we're going to blow past that and go right to the light. 
That's why I was crying at the end of the movie. I was like, oh my God, I could just hush. I was hushed in silence. Just let the tears roll, you know, that's all it is. Let the credits roll and let the tears roll. So sit back. We're probably going to be here for a while, but sit back and let yourself be taken into one of the masterpiece movies that Jesus is using now to really take us into a direct experience. That's what we want. We've always wanted a direct experience. We don't want concepts. And let yourself be taken in by a masterful movie, a masterful teaching device. I think back of, when I think of the great Indian traditions, has anybody see, seen Gandhi? Did you see the movie Gandhi? Richard Attenborough, Gandhi? Didn't that move you? That moved me. That changed my life. That changed the direction of my life when I saw Gandhi. I was like, oh my God. Is, even Einstein said, scarcely in generations to come will ever, anyone ever believe that a man walked in flesh and blood like Gandhi. That was like an oh my God movie. And if you like Gandhi, hold on to your hat because Jesus is cranking it up beyond nonviolence. He's going for transcendence of time and space. He's going beyond bodies today. He's going beyond everything that we've ever learned in history. And he's saying, come to me. I'm calling you out of the world. So you can tell I'm a little fired up today. <laughs> I hope you will feel it like I feel it because I've been lit up. <laughs> by this movie, and I think, just let the movie take you, let Jesus take you. Watch how everything comes together. Every single scene, every single flashback leads to one moment where you feel God's love. And that's all we've ever prayed for, is to, to know God's love. So enjoy the movie, I'll pop in from time to time. <laughs>